So in this video, I'm going to be talking um, kind of more in depth about the scatter template. Um, and uh, this is a template which is possibly um, sort of the most wide ranging in its uses of any Flourish template. Um, we always kind of joke when we're um, developing a new template, like, oh, maybe we can just add it to, to the scatter the scatter chart, scatter plot, rather, um, because it can just do so many things. And I want to start here in the um, template user because I wanted to show you visually how many different things um, Scatter can do. So these are all the starting points that we have with Scatter, and these are all sort of like different types of charts, um, really generally actually different types of charts that you can make with the Scatter template. I think um, I think the only one that's not on here that you can do is uh, bee swarm plots. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through them and sort of explain the sort of basic structure of the scatter template and then kind of show you how each of the other plots are made. But just know that if you want to make one of these, um, you don't need to 100% make it just throwing your data into this basic scatter plot and then scatter plot and then trying to sort of do the settings yourself um, in the column settings. There are these starting points which should be good guides. So I'm going to start here in like kind of a basic scatter plot, um, which is showing um, I think GDP per capita and life expectancy um, from a bunch of different uh, countries. So each of these dots is a country. Um, and I wanted to show you this because I want to kind of show you the, the differences between a basic scatter plot and a bubble chart. So here's the basic scatter. Um, also good to know is that the scatter template, the settings panel is kind of enormous and, and a bit, a bit daunting. Um, but don't be too scared by that. Um, a lot of these things, if you're not sort of making that kind of chart, um, you don't really need to touch them. So yeah, so here we are in a basic sort of um, X, Y scatter plot um, with you know GDP per capita on one axis and life expectancy on the other. And they're doing a little bit of coloring by continent and or region or whatever. Um, but if you go to the data, we can see, if you just ignore everything else, you can just see that the X values are here bound to GDP and the Y values are the life expectancy. Um, and then we're naming each of them and giving them a region for the color. Um, but that's like really just a basic, even if I just got rid of these two um, um, settings, you can see that these are just, just a normal X, Y scatter plot. So I'm gonna throw those back on there though. So we've already talked about color and stuff like that, so I don't need to go over that again. Um, but this is a basic scatter plot. If I want to make this into a bubble chart, I need to add a third sort of value dimension. And um, that would be the value that it, the bubbles would be scaled by. So in this case, that is this size um, column setting right here. And I'm going to make that column E. So we're going to be sizing by this population column that we have yet to sort of touch so far. Um, and there you go. So now we can see that the bubbles are um, being sized by population and it should come up in the pop-up population now. Um, a couple of sort of setting things to know about um, the dots. Um, you can kind of change the color palette like normal um, here, um, but you can also sort of change from the style. So I like to do kind of sort of low opacity um, for the dots because especially if you're using um, a, a color palette that's a bit darker um, so you can see where the overlaps are. Um, I think it looks quite nice. You can also add a bit of a, an outline to the dots if you want. Um, I like to keep that quite quite minimal um, just to give them a bit of a sort of bit of a bit dimension to them. Um, but yes yeah, so that's just sort of a basic bubble chart. There are starting points for basic scatter and bubble charts so you should be totally fine making those. Um, the other thing I want to point out before I move on on this template is that we are currently on the x-axis um, using a logarithmic scale, um, I believe, um, log scale, um, just to point out that you can do stuff like that um, in this chart. Um, okay, so the next one is, is a strip plot, um, and this is just sort of shows, um, it's a good way to just sort of display um, like sort of data by category um, and one other variable. 
Um, it's something that sort of the Adviz people of uh, chart type that they really like to use. Um, so we have it in this template as well. <laughs> um, the binding that you're going to be using for that is going to be this series connect with line binding. Um, but before I talk about that, we should talk about what the X and Y values are. So to make this possible, you see that the X value is this sort of numeric value. And then the Y value is going to be a categorical um, value. So it's going to be a category of um, like Europe and Central Asia. Um, and that's what makes these sort of lines here along the Y axis. Um, and then, you, and then the, what, the um, X value sort of places the dots along there. Um, and you'll see that these are actual like countries and stuff. So that is what the C um, column is, is doing there with name. Um, and then to make these connect, so if I get rid of this and watch this here in the corner, if I get rid of this, um, it doesn't really do very much. Um, but um, uh, what it's doing is kind of like making these into a category um, and it's connecting them with a line. Um, so this makes more sense if you look at it on the dot plot actually, but just know that the strip plot is basically you have one um, categorical variable and then one numeric variable. And you can do the same with changing the opacity and everything with these. Um, these definitely having lower opacity um, is really um, quite quite useful, I think, because there's lots of interesting overlap oops, um, between the dots often. So now moving on to the dot plot. Um, here's another example. This is like a very similar chart. Um, so you have this along the x-axis, you have this sort of numeric um, value, and then the y-axis is the category. Um, but the y-axis, make sure you understand in this one, is also the sort of name. So we're instead of having one sort of category and then placing named dots along it, like in the strip plot, in this we have the category and then we're placing um, two other sort of data points along it for that same category. So in this case we have the country and then we have the year and the income in that year and we're connecting them with a dot if that makes sense. So 2014 and 2004. Um, and make sure you have this um, series. In this case, we're actually connecting by the value uh, or we, like we did in the other one, we're connecting on the country. So if you want this to be by country, make sure that that is the column that you have in this series connect with line. So if I get rid of that, it removes the lines. It just has the dots placed along um, sort of like we had in the strip plot. Um, but if we put it back, it sort of draws the line between them. And there's all sorts of styling options. Oops. Um, there's all sorts of styling options for the line um, and stuff like that. You can also add arrows um, to the lines, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see. Oh no. Arrowheads. That seems to be broken. Okay, well, pretend like that didn't happen. <laughs> um, cool. So the second to last one I'm going to show you is sort of um, the distribution um, option, and that is box violin and bee swarm plots. So how to explain this? So basically all you need to do for these is to enter X and Y values. Um, your X value is most likely going to be a sort of category again, as you can see. And then the Y values are going to be like the value of, of from each of those categories, some sort of value. And um, these are great um, to sort of show the distribution of, of, um, of values across different categories. So um, unlike in the box, or so the, the strip, and, strip and dot plots, um, you're usually going to have your categorical um, uh, variables along the X, and then your, your values, your numeric values are going to be the Y. Um, and if you go on the settings panel to this box violin and beast forms, these are all just sort of different, um, more sort of statistical um, uh, options, visualization options that sort of science and st statistics people like to use to show distribution. So we have B swarm, which is where you kind of B swarm out the, um, the values. 
Um, and then you also have, oops, oh, sorry. So you can see they're actually on top of each other here. And when you bee swarm, they spread them out to make them look kind of like a bee swarm. Um, and then you can also have, uh, we can also have a box plot just sort of show the, the median distribution. And then you can also have a violin plot, uh, which is kind of similar to, to a bee swarm. Um, if you show them kind of, um, outlines the bee swarm basically. Um, so those are kind of advanced options and they're not something that a lot of people use, but if you're sort of into science and statistics, um, they're definitely uh, useful and they're there, um, for you. And then finally, I just want to show this because I'm not really going to explain it. It's kind of complicated, but, um, we also have this Hans Rosling, um, which he was a famous, um, statist econ economist, statistician. Um, and this chart just sort of animates through different years and shows different, um, uh, points of development of different countries in the world. And this is an option. Um, you do a lot of it here in this time slider. Um, and there's this sort of extra time binding, um, column setting here that you have to use. I'm not going to really show it to you now because, um, if you're into this, you'll be able to figure it out. Um, but that's kind of a nice place to end. Um, this is probably going to be the longest video because this is kind of our most uh, versatile template. Uh, but once you know what it can do, it's really quite powerful. Um, so thanks for listening.